Well, this is it. My family's old barn house. I told you it'd be a little run down. They aren't exactly the type to make repairs. Hey, listen. Before we go in, I need to tell you something. It's just... Uh, I know I've said before that my family is a bit strange. And I want you to be prepared. You say that, but you really don't know what you're getting into. The situation is a bit complicated. I'll tell you, but first I need you to promise that you won't freak out, okay? Thank you. Have you ever heard the legend about babies born on Halloween? As the legend goes, anybody who is born on October 31st has a special ability. They can see and hear the dead. Speaking from personal experience, that's true. Every last word of it and, uh, well, my family are all ghosts. No, this isn't just a prank. I wouldn't drive hundreds of miles out to the middle of nowhere for a stupid prank. Listen, I know it sounds crazy, but will you please trust me? I can prove it to you. Yes, I can. When we go into that house, they'll all be there. Well, no, you won't be able to see them. At least, not yet. But they all own hats, and I told them to each wear one. So, you can know where everybody is. I know it sounds weird that a family of ghosts would adopt a living child. But that's what happened. My biological parents left me out in the countryside as a baby. I'm not exactly sure why. But I think it might have something to do with me being considered bad luck. These ghosts were the ones who took me in. They are the reason I'm even alive today. I know you think this is funny, but please, can you try to take it seriously? Thank you. Let's go inside. Why are you looking at me like that? I know you think I've gone insane, but can you at least not make it so obvious? Thanks. Hi everyone! I'm back! And I brought my partner with me. They are so excited to meet you all. Can you please put on your hats? Whoa, 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 whoa. Baby, calm down. No, those hats aren't flying. I told you, it's just my family. Yes, mom, I miss you too. Can you please give us a second? I think they're in a little bit of shock right now. See, baby? You can wave your hand above and below the hat, but there are no wires. What you're seeing is real. Now calm down. 
they aren't going to hurt you. You don't need to apologize. I understand you were skeptical. But now you know the truth, so we can move past this. Come here, let me take you to the couch. William, put your hat on. I know you think this is funny, but now is not the time. Dad, you can't just say things like that. No, I'm not going to answer. That is personal information. You're so lucky they can't hear you right now. Oh, it's not important what he said. You know, with them all being dead, they're bound to have some old-fashioned thinking. Yes, I already told you I can see and hear my family. You'll be able to do the same thing eventually. But they all need time to... Uh, well, haunt you. I know how that sounds, but I promise they are totally harmless. Since the initial shock seems to have worn off a bit, let me introduce you all. The woman in the floral sun hat here is my mom, Eleanor. And the gentleman in the tricorn hat is my father, Joseph. The two of them died in 1794 from yellow fever only a few weeks after they were married. They are both very happy to meet you. The two boys in the boater hats are my brothers. The one with the red brim is John, and the one in the white brim is William. They both died in 1856 from a bear attack after a hunting trip went south. They are also happy to meet you, but do know their form of love is very immature. Oh, shush. Mom always says the same thing, and you don't give her a hard time. Anyways, that girl wearing the puffy bonnet is my sister Clara. She got caught up in a farming accident in 1915. She's not super outspoken, but every time I mentioned you, she just kept talking about how she couldn't wait to see you in person. And lastly, you can't see nor hear him, but we have a dog too. Trust me, we tried to make him wear a hat, a collar, or really anything, but he just wasn't having it. In order for a ghost to interact with the material plane, they need to put in a lot of effort. And Mossy is the laziest dog you will ever meet. Oh, he's just lying on the rug over there, being a sack of potatoes as usual. Everyone, I've told you about them before, but this is my partner. They're the most amazing person in the world. I just know you'll get along great. Oh, piss off, John. This isn't the time for jokes. Sorry, Dad. I didn't mean to curse. Yes, Clara, they're fine. This is just their first time interacting with ghosts. It'll take some getting used to. No, I... Uh... Hey, everyone. One at a time, please. Remember, they can't hear you. I need to translate for everybody. So please take your turns. Sorry, sweetie. It can get a bit chaotic in here at times. Do you have any questions for my family?
No, we're not blood related. Well, John and William are, but the rest of us are adopted. My mom and dad always wanted to have kids, but because of their deaths, that wasn't possible. So it kind of became a habit of them to take in any lost souls they found out here. Mom, I didn't say the habit was a bad thing. I love what you've done for our family. You know that. I love you too. Uh, no, baby. They aren't trapped in this house. They're more so uh, tethered to it. Well, not the house specifically, but to the place they died at. Like, they can go wherever they want, but the farther they are from that spot, the more they experience some weird effects. It's kind of hard to explain when you haven't seen it, but their bodies become more uh, wispy and their voices don't carry as far. They become less perceivable even to each other, not just me. So, to avoid all of that stuff, they just stay here. <laughs> I think Mossy is interested in you now. He's sniffing your shoes. Oh, he just jumped up on your lap. I think he likes you. Oh, it's cute how you're trying to pet him. But sorry, he can't feel it. At least not from you or me. Well, everyone, do you have any questions from my baby here? Don't worry, Mom. We'll take care. I know, Clara. You've said that at least five times tonight. I promise we'll be safe. Bye, everyone. I love you all. Yes, I love you too, Mossy. I'll see you all again soon. I'm telling you, as much as I love seeing them, they can be a bit overbearing sometimes. So, what did you think? I'm glad you had a good time. At least once you got over the whole ghost thing. I know some of their questions were a bit intense, but they just want the best for me. I'm glad you understand. Yeah, they all seem to like you. I know you couldn't read their faces, but it was smiles all around. What do you mean it makes sense now? What does? Why I never want to watch ghost movies with you. <laughs> you just found out that not only are ghosts real, but your girlfriend was raised by some. And that's where your mind goes? You're a strange one sometimes, you know that? I also want to say uh, thank you for not, uh, you know, leaving. Well, you didn't believe me when I told you, and I knew that would happen. I mean, who could believe something this crazy? But I was worried that you would either leave me for me lying to you, or for you being too scared of my family to want anything to do with me. You really mean that? I 
Thank you so much, baby. I love you. John, I see you peeking through the window. That's right, you better run. I swear, that boy is always sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. Why don't we head back to the car and maybe get a hotel room for tonight? There's a small town not too far from here. And from there we can continue this little session we started. How about that? <laughs> it's a date then. Let's go.